Hello and welcome to the NPTEL MOOCs course on Design and Implementation of Human Computer Interfaces, lecture number 30, where we will continue our discussion on how to test the system. As is the practice we are following before we start the lecture, let us quickly recap the things that we have learned and where we are currently. So, if you may recollect, we are discussing interactive system development life cycle. In this life cycle, there are several stages. We have covered many of the stages and we are currently covering the implementation stage. So, among the stages, we have covered requirement gathering analysis and specification stage. Outcome of this stage is the SRS document as we have noted earlier. Then we have covered design, prototyping and evaluation stages which together constitute the design prototype evaluation cycle. In the design, we have also covered the system design as well as the interface and interaction design. Outcome of the design stage is the design document both for interface design as well as system design. Outcome of the prototyping stage is the prototype that is created and outcome of the evaluation stage is the evaluation report of the prototypes. We have covered the coding and implementation stage as well. In the coding and implementation stage, we have learned about good coding practices and do's and do nots for coding. The outcome of this stage is the code. Currently, we are discussing the code testing stage. So, in this stage, we are discussing how to test the code that we have written to implement the system. So, we have learned about implementation using code and we are discussing the testing. Code implementation involves code writing which involves following good coding styles and testing can be done at different levels. At unit level, we have learned about the review based testing and the execution based testing. Review based testing involves code walkthrough and code inspection methods which we have discussed in details. Execution based testing involves black box testing and white box testing which also we have discussed in details in the earlier lectures. Outcome of each of these testing methods can be a testing document as we have seen earlier. Now, all these testings that we have discussed so far are done at the unit level. Recollect that while talking about design of a system, we talked about designing it at module level, creating a module level hierarchy. So, the unit level is basically referring to the implementation and testing at the module level. So, in this lecture, we are going to talk about how to test the whole system once we put together all the modules or the units. So, putting together of units and testing of the whole system together is the subject matter of this lecture. Now, as we know or we have already noted in the earlier lectures, particularly during our uh, discussion on system design, the whole system is not a monolith. So, it consists of subsystems, in other words modules and units. So, we are supposed to create a module hierarchy, hierarchy of subsystems to go for the design of the whole system. That makes it easier to understand and maintain the system. Therefore, while implementing, we also go for implementing one unit at a time rather than trying to implement the whole system together at the same time. So, testing the whole system at a time becomes difficult because we have a modular hierarchy and we require some alternative approaches for testing the whole system. Once all the units are implemented and linked together to form the whole system. In order to test the whole system, we follow broadly two approaches. One is bottom up testing and the other is top down testing. So, what are these concepts? 
what is bottom up testing and what is top down testing. Let us try to understand these different testing approaches. In the bottom up testing, what we do? Each subsystem is tested separately and then the full system is tested. That means, as the name suggests, we go from bottom to top. At the bottom level, there are subsystems and at the top level, there are subsystems put together to form the whole system. So, we test the subsystems or units and then test the whole system. Now, a subsystem, a subsystem may consist of many modules which communicate with each other through well defined interfaces, interfaces between modules. So, do not confuse it with user interfaces, these are interfaces between modules that form the subsystem. So, while we go for bottom up testing, our primary purpose is to test the interfaces, whether the interfaces are working properly. Now, there are two types of interfaces, interfaces, control interfaces and data interfaces. So, we test both types of interfaces in the bottom up testing. The test cases that we design to test the interfaces should exercise all interfaces in all possible manners. That is the general principle that is followed while we use bottom up testing method for testing the whole system. So, then in the bottom up method what we do? We first test the units and then join them together and test the whole system. In the testing, the primary emphasis is given on how the interfaces are performing because already we have done testing at the unit levels, no need to test them separately. But whether their communication is taking place as per expectations, that is what we need to test. So, we test the interfaces, both control and data interfaces we test and our test cases should be designed in a way such that these all these interfaces are tested in all possible manners. That is the general principle guiding the bottom up testing approach. Next is the top down testing. What we do in this top down testing? Here the testing starts with the main routine. So, that means, we are starting with the main routine at the top and then slowly going to the bottom. After top level skeleton is tested, the immediate subroutines of the skeleton are combined with it and tested and this process continues till we cover the whole system. So, first we start with the main routine a skeleton version of it, then we combine it with the immediate subroutines and test it and this process continues till the entire system is tested. Now, the problem with this is that while we are testing at the top, we may not have access to the lower level routines. So, in order to implement this approach, we require additional support. So, these approaches may require a concept called as stubs. Stubs simulate effect of a lower level routines called by the routines under test particularly when we are following a top down approach. So, we require stubs which simulates the effect of lower level routines while we are following top down approach. So, we start with main routines, but the lower routines are not available. So, we use stubs instead of the actual routine, so that the effect of the lower level routines for the given test cases can be simulated. But that is not only restricted to the top down approach. In bottom up approach also, we require some additional support. We require driver routines. These routines are used during bottom up testing approach to simulate behavior of upper level modules that are not yet integrated. So, in bottom up approach, we start at the bottom and slowly go up. While going up, all the routines that are available at the higher level may not be available to the 
portion of the system under test. So, at that time we use driver routines to simulate the effect of those routines that are not yet available. So, for full system testing either bottom up or top down we require some additional things to do. If we are following a top down approach we require the help of stub modules. If we are following a bottom up approach then we require the help of the driver modules. So, those are the two broad categories of approaches we use for system testing. Now, let us quickly have a look at different stages of system testing, how many stages are there and what they do. There are mainly three stages, alpha testing, beta testing and acceptance testing. Let us see what is what. Alpha testing, this is the first stage of system testing. In this stage what happens is that the full system testing is carried out by a test team which is part of the organization. So, within the organization the testing takes place. Next is beta testing. Unlike the alpha testing, beta testing is performed by a select group of friendly customers which may be specially recruited. So, in case of alpha testing all the members of the test team are part of the organization. So, no outsiders are involved. In case of beta testing that is not the case, select group of friendly customers are specially recruited to perform the testing. Note that here we are talking about customers not the end users. The third and final stage of testing is acceptance testing. This is entirely performed by customer. It can be any customer not necessarily a select group of friendly customers specially recruited. So, this is the last stage where customers provide feedback on the performance of the system. So, we have learned about broad approaches, stages of testing. Let us focus on types of testing, what are the different types of system testing. So, in system testing what do we test? We test functionality and performance. These are the two things that we test. When we test functionality, SRS is our primary document, whatever is listed in SRS those things we test to see if the system satisfies the functional requirements that are specified in the SRS. In the performance test that is the other broad category of test, what we do is perform non-functional requirement testing. So, in the performance test, testing is for non-functional requirements. What are those requirements and how those are tested? Let us have a quick look. First is stress testing. In this testing, system performance is evaluated under abnormal or illegal input conditions in short time periods. So, that is one kind of performance test that we popularly perform or frequently perform during non-functional testing. Then comes volume testing. Here what we test? We test system performance for large input. So, in the previous case stress testing within short time span we provide large amount of input or a illegal or abnormal input and test. In case of volume testing time span is not the issue rather the amount of data that the system is being asked to process is the issue. So, we test how much data it can process, the volume of the data. Then comes configuration testing. So, we have stress testing, volume testing, then comes configuration testing. This testing is done to analyze the behavior of the system in various hardware and software configurations. 
specified in the requirements. Typically, when you specify the requirements for the system, you specify operating environments including hardware and software. Now, in configuration testing, those specifications are tested whether the system is actually performing under those specifications that we test in configuration testing. Then comes compatibility testing. So, in this testing we check if the system interfaces properly with other systems. This is another special type of testing. So, sometimes it may so happen that the system under test needs to work with some other system. For that some specific interfaces may be defined and in compatibility tests we check if those interfaces are working as per expectations. Another testing is regression testing. In this case we test the backward compatibility of the software with older platforms or systems. Sometimes softwares are upgraded to newer versions. Now, whether those newer versions work with compatible software of older versions, those things we need to test and those testing are done under the broad concept of regression testing. So, in compatibility testing, we do not check for backward compatibility, we check for current compatibility whereas, in regression testing we check for backward compatibility. Then comes recovery testing. It tests under recovery testing what we test? We test system response to faults. What are those faults? Loss of power, device faulty devices, faults in services, faulty data and so on. So, when we perform this type of test that is recovery testing. So, how the system behaves or how the system responds when faulty environment is there. Now, fault can happen in any one or multiple of those things such as loss of power, devices, services, data and so on. We also have documentation testing. What happens here? As the name suggests, in this testing various manuals and documents are created and tested for understandability. It may appear that this is not a very significant test and any document created should be understandable, but that is not the case. When we create documents, it should be thoroughly proofread and tested for understandability, readability and maintainability. Those things are also tested as part of performance test of a system under documentation testing. Finally, comes usability testing which is the most important non-functional requirements in the context of our focus that is interactive systems or human computer interfaces. So far when we talked about different types of testings at unit level or system level such as review based testing, black box testing, white box testing or this top down and bottom up testing. Primarily these were meant to test functionalities. So, the starting point of system design was SRS and these testings were done to see how much the implementation conformed to the requirements specified in the SRS document. Now, as we have noted earlier, in case of interactive systems, one important consideration is usability. So, functional requirements are not the only thing. Usability requirements are also very important to make a successful human computer interface. So far in our testing, we did not discuss much about usability requirement testing except 
in the design prototype evaluate cycle where we mentioned that interface designs are prototyped and evaluated with experts to check for usability issues. But that is a very quick way of testing. We require more rigorous systematic and scientific testing methods which is a major stage in interactive system development life cycle. In the subsequent lectures, we are going to talk about usability testing in details. Other performance testings that we have mentioned like stress testing, volume testing, compatibility testing, regression testing, configuration testing and so on. We will not devote much time on those and we will have only the brief idea that we have discussed here. However, on usability testing, we are going to devote several lectures next to understand in details how usability testing can be performed with end users in a very systematic and rigorous manner. So, that is in summary what we need to test when we are testing the full system. Just to recap, we mentioned about two broad approaches to test the whole system top down and bottom up. Earlier we have seen unit level testings. In top down and bottom up approaches along with unit level testing, we test the whole system. When we talk of bottom up approach, we essentially test the units individually and then put them together and we test the interfacing between the units so that the whole system is tested. In top down approach, we start with the main routine and progress in an iterative fashion by adding immediate subroutines to the main routines and this process goes on the next immediate subroutine to the subroutine attached to the main routine and so on. And this process goes on till we manage to test the whole system. In both the cases, we require additional implementations to support the testing because here whole system is not available at a time. So, testing whole system at a time is difficult. So, we require, require additional support. If we are following a top down approach, then stub modules are used to implement or simulate lower level responses which are not immediately available to the main routines or the higher routines. Similarly, if we are following bottom up approach, then we need to implement driver modules which are used to simulate response of the program for higher level modules which are not immediately available for the subsystem under test. Now, these top down or bottom up approaches are primarily meant for functional testing. Along with that, we also need performance testing. In functional testing or the top down and bottom up approaches, there are primarily three stages of testing, alpha testing where the testing is done, done within the organization, beta testing where some selected customers are part of the test team and acceptance testing which is done by the customers. Along with functional testing, we also perform performance testing. Several performance testings are there including stress testing, volume testing compatibility testing, configuration testing, regression testing, documentation testing as well as some other testings. One of the important testing here is the usability testing which is our primary focus in this course. In usability testing, we test for usability issues with end users. So, in subsequent lectures, we are going to learn about such testing methods and the process involved. Whatever we have discussed today can be found in these books, excluding details of usability testing of course, but the broad ideas of these different testing methods can be found in these books, Fundamentals of Software Engineering Chapter 10 and Software Engineering a Practitioner's Approach Chapter 19 to 21. Of course, in these chapters you will find the concepts in more details than how we covered. For our purpose, this brief description is sufficient to explain the concepts. Next, we will focus more on details of usability testing. Hope you have enjoyed the lecture and understood the concepts. 
With this we have come to the end of our discussion on the code testing stage. As you can quickly recap in this code testing stage we have learned several concepts mostly focused on unit level testing that includes code review, execution based testing and also we have covered in brief ideas that are important for system level testing. Next we are going to talk about usability testing. Looking forward to meet you all in the next lecture. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.